Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'm going to show you how to build a simple modern dining table on Modern Builds. A lot of the materials for my projects come from Home Depot and that's because, well, there's one in just about every city in the US. But this week I got a commission to build a dining table for a client. So I went to my local lumber supplier, Phoenix Hardwood in Oklahoma City, and I picked up some eight quarter white oak. Whenever I got my boards, they had already ran them through their commercial planer or surfacer and got them to their final thickness. This thing was really cool. It actually planed down both sides of the board at the same time. From there, it went to a machine that straight line dripped one edge. This straight line is what I'll be referencing when I cut them to their final width later. Of course, if your lumber supplier does not have these surfaces, you can always plane and rip a straight edge on them at home. Once I had my pieces back in the shop, I could cut them to their rough length. I wanted to cut them with a few inches to spare so that I could trim the table later on. After that, I cut all six pieces to their final width. This is the exact same method you would use if you had to establish your first straight edge yourself. This straight edge I got from Home Depot and I will leave it linked in the description. It's good, not great, but better than a scrap piece of wood. I cut my pieces to width so that I had three pairs of boards. That way, everything was symmetrical when I laid them out. The thickest boards were in the center and the thinnest at the edge. Here you see me making marks where I'll be joining the boards together using a doweling jig. Once again, this came from Home Depot and it's a really cheap way to get in to dowel joinery. You just line the jig up on the marks that you made on each one of your joining boards, then you use a drill with a stop on it to drill a hole that accepts a peg on each board. I went ahead and glued the peg into one of the boards, that way I wouldn't have to worry about gluing in my dowels during the table glue up. Make sure all of your holes line up before you do that though. Once I had all my dowels in, I did another test fit to make sure everything would work. Then I made a couple sets of call boards before my glue up. These are just two by fours with packing tape on one side so that wood glue doesn't stick to them. You'll see what they're used for in just one minute. So now that I've got my call boards and I am prepped and ready to go, I just wanna take a moment and say how excited I am to be featuring my Maker Brand clamps on this project. Maker Brand is the company that I started with my friends Chris Salamone and Ben Ueda. Together we do the Modern Maker Podcast. Our goal is to make tools for makers by makers and we've launched with clamps and wood finish which we'll see later on in this video. I'm gonna be using the Maker Brand starter kit that's linked down in the description. The pack consists of two 48 inch T-bar clamps which are stupid strong, four 12 inch F-style clamps, and four 28 inch F-style clamps. And if you're interested in finding out more, please check out the link in the description. This whole starter kit is under $200 right now, so be sure and check that out. I had quite a few boards to glue up here without a lot of time before they potentially started to dry. So I laid the glue on really thick and I just used a latex glove and my hand to spread out all the glue. Once it was on, I was able to tighten down all of my clamps. And before I apply much pressure, I'm gonna throw my call boards in. What this does is it sandwiches the boards so that they're all parallel. Once I use my Maker Brand F-style clamps to sandwich the boards together, it's gonna help my tabletop be that much flatter. Now that those are on, I'm gonna tighten everything down. After I let the tabletop dry overnight, I got some Gorilla Glue wood glue along with some sawdust and I mixed those together to make a wood filler. I used this to fill any cracks or voids in my glue up. Once it dries, it blends into the wood really, really nicely. Better than wood filler that you would buy. Whenever I belt sand a tabletop, I start with an 80 grit belt to do all of the rough flattening. Then I switch to a 120 grit belt to help smooth everything out. During the dustiest part of this project, I'd like to give a huge thanks to this video sponsor, RZ Mask. RZ Mask is my favorite dust protection in the game. Here's why. It's lightweight, it's comfortable, and it's convenient to wear with other accessories like safety glasses or hearing protection. Lately, I've been wearing the M2.5 mask and I love it, but now that the weather is starting to get a little chillier here in Oklahoma, I'm gonna be trying out the original M1 mask. This mask has a single Velcro strap and is great for colder weather. You'll be seeing me wear this mask in upcoming videos and I'll let you know what I think. So to learn more and to pick up an RZ mask for yourself, make sure and follow the link down in the description, rzmask.com slash modern builds and use the code modern builds at checkout for 15% off. Thanks RZ mask and thanks you guys. Here, now that my tabletop was nice and flat, I used my circular saw and that same straight edge from earlier to trim my tabletop to its final length. 
And I should mention, I put a new circular saw blade on my saw and it cut great, almost no chip out. That'll be linked below. Before the client hired me to build this tabletop, they bought these prefabricated metal legs off of Etsy. They worked great and they were really strong, but if I were doing this project myself, I would have either bought or built some custom metal legs that were just a little more heavy duty. But whether you buy or build the legs and they're raw steel, you'll need to clean them up. I like a wire brush attachment either on a drill or an angle grinder. This will remove the surface rust as well as some of the mill scale, and then once you come back with a rag and some acetone to clean them up a little bit more, you can apply a coat or two of finishing paste wax. Minwax makes a great one, hopefully someday Maker Brand will release their own version. You just apply a heavy coat, let it set for about 5 to 15 minutes depending on your area, then buff it to a nice polish. And speaking of Maker Brand, this is Simple Finish, an oil-based wood finished with a wax sealer from my company Maker Brand. Please excuse this bad lighting, I was applying the finish the night before it needed to be delivered, but just look at how beautiful and rich and deep the color of the wood becomes when you apply a couple coats of this finish. Links for this will be on the Maker Brand website linked in the description as well. I hope you all enjoyed this project. My goal was a super high quality limited tools project and I think I achieved this. I built this using a drill, a circular saw, and a belt sander. That's it. And if you're not already, make sure you click that subscribe button down below me and hit that notification bell to stay updated when I post new videos. Speaking of videos, I've got two more that you can watch. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time on Modern Builds. Oh, and I got merch, link in bio.